Hey, what up? It's Will Maker. Today, I'm going to go over the top ways that have helped me with latency and performance issues in FL Studio. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Latency and performance issues can really kill a vibe, and they're not always caused by the same thing. Throughout my time recording in FL Studio, these are the things that have gotten me through these sessions. Number one can be obvious, but check your specs. If you have an older computer, this is something I'd always recommend doing. Not only can this affect latency, but other things as well. As of this video, FL Studio version 21.2 is compatible with Windows 10 and higher, 4 gigabytes of free disk space, and 4 gigabytes of RAM. For Mac, compatibility starts at 10.13.6. It's high Sierra or higher, 4 gigabytes of free disk space, and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Number two is going to be using an external SSD drive, and this has worked out really well for me. I also store plugins that allow me to, along with samples and sessions. I've used a regular external hard drive in the past. They are cheaper and do have a longer lifespan. It does help, but an SSD is faster and it's shock resistant. Number three, if you want to know which plugins are taking up the most CPU space, come over here to view. Go down to Plugins Performance Monitor. This will allow you to check and see which plugins are taking up the most CPU space. Number four is going to be replace plugins with an audio clip. If you're desperate to free up some space to finish a mix, you can create an audio clip and get rid of the plugin that's taking up the space. I would say VAS first and make a copy if you're going to delete the plugin once you've created the WAV file. So that way you can go back and make changes later just to be safe. This can also be helpful if you just want to turn MIDI into an audio clip. To do this, highlight your section. Head over to the mixer window, then you're going to arm the track that your plugin is on. Next, come up here, go to disk recording, and then render arm tracks to WAV files. Go ahead and click start. And now just turn off the track. And if that doesn't work, now you can just come over here and delete the plugin since you've created a copy. Number five is going to be making sure that your DAW and your plugins are up to date. Unlike updating my computer's OS, when there's an update for my DAW or my plugins, I usually take those updates. Your DAW and your plugins can perform a bit better when on the newest versions. I do also recommend checking the compatibility to check for issues. Number six, having excess windows open. I've seen sessions where the moment you open FL Studio, there's all kinds of windows open all at once. All those open windows do slow down your computer. You can close all of them by doing these commands. On a Mac, it's going to be FN, Option, F12. And on a PC, it's going to be Alt, F12. If your session always opens up multiple windows all at once and you want to stop this, come up to Options, go down to General, scroll down to the Miscellaneous tab, and you're going to want to make sure Auto Select Links Modules is selected. Lastly, which is buffer size. So for this on a PC, I'm looking for 128 to 256 samples when recording vocals. If I'm recording vocals, I also try to keep a limiter or any other processing off my master. And then when I'm mixing, I generally go for 1024 samples. On a Mac when recording vocals, I'm usually going for what ImageLine recommends, and that's around 10 MS, around 441 samples. And when I'm mixing, if I start to experience pops or things not working right, I move this to 20 MS, which is around 880 samples. So those are the things that have helped me with latency and performance issues in FL Studio. So if you like content like this, straight to the point, please feel free and like and subscribe. Other than that, peace out.